Uwe, today we are going to synthesize some antibiotics. <laughs> I'm going to show you biochemical magic to turn pure child powder into the female sex hormone estradiol. Enjoy! Estradiol is this funny looking molecule. In comparison to men, with their main sex hormone being testosterone, women's is estradiol. It is the most potent naturally occurring estrogen. Today, estradiol is used in feminizing hormone therapy, which is very interesting to read about. We are not going to get political as you are here to see chemistry, but let me put it like this. A few years back the idea seemed crazy, but nowadays I understand why people do it. In combination with other chemicals, estradiol is used in birth control and to treat prostate cancer. It even finds use in treating schizophrenia in women. You, uh, you wanna cook? Ew. You. You and, uh, and me. <laughs> That's right. Put on the cat ears, lean back and we will start cooking. For the preparation you are going to need a source of testosterone, aromatase enzyme and a suited solvent for the biosynthesis. As our testosterone source I will use testosterone propionates which was made by using the pocket reduction method. It is an ester of propionic acid and we need free testosterone. 250 mg are weighed out and to obtain free testosterone you need to hydrolyze the ester. It is poorly soluble in water so you can either use fancy and more expensive solvents or dissolve it in a simple solvent, dissolve a base in water and then stir it. If you do it this way it will not only be easy to isolate the pure testosterone but it will also look fancy while running the reaction. I took about a gram of sodium hydroxide out of this small barrel. The exact amount does not matter but more is better. Testosterone is not air sensitive, yet this will be stirred for 25.6 hours and carbon dioxide from the air would react with the sodium hydroxide. Stopping up the flask does not take long. A simple saponification reaction takes place. Testosterone propionate is turned into testosterone and sodium propionate. You don't necessarily need to heat if you stir for a long time. Once done, the liquids were transferred to a separatory funnel and the bottom aqueous layer containing sodium hydroxide and propionate was discarded. Our favorite hormone remains dissolved in the toluene layer which was collected in this squashed down beaker. If you look closely you can see a bunch of water droplets at the bottom. They were removed by tilting the glass dish and sucking them up with a pipette. I then used the most gentle and scientific method to remove the solvent. That's right, you put a fan next to it and hope no fly decides to get jacked. Once dry we were left with 193 milligrams of raw masculinity. This represents a yield of 92.2%. The next synthesis step will involve magic and when saying magic I am talking about biochemistry. Biochemistry is evil. You put in your e-duct and that weird boy called aromatase turns it into estradiol. If there's a biochemist among us feel free to explain more in the comments. I'd appreciate it. It's crazy that these things don't come with pockets. You can either put your phone on the side or if you need to store something bigger you can sandwich it between your thighs. I'm a chemist, not a biochemist, so this field of chemistry is really weird. This reaction for example will be maintained at 37 degrees for a long time. Sure, enzymes need the right temperature to operate, but it's still amazing how careful you need to be here. I scraped the funny white powder together and weighed it out. 100% yields can be expected, but some will always be left behind. As a reaction medium we will use a special kind of solution. Tears and as a catalyst the hatred stemming from hundreds of failed experiments. Actually it is a phosphate buffer to maintain a specific pH and it contains NADP and glucose 6 phosphate. A biochemist friend of mine prepared the solution and he made it more concentrated than in the paper yet said it will still work. With the help of distilled water we diluted it to a volume of about 500 milliliters. Aromatase is also known as CYP19A1. Unlike normal chemicals it is stored at dry ice temperatures because it doesn't want to exist. Usually it is sold for a crap ton of money but I was fortunate to know somebody who had it. Add a stir fish to your flask, set up a water bath and you are ready for your first biosynthesis. Raw muscle powder goes in first and as you can see it does not dissolve well. The powder floats at the top and for this reason plus the larger scale the reaction will be stirred for 48 hours and not 3 like in the paper. Formed estradiol should not be destroyed by this but to keep it efficient fresh aromatase will be added in 8 hour intervals until the 250 mg are used up. Just to make sure nothing oxidizes, the air was displaced with argon. It doesn't take long and this gas is cheap. I slept two times and then stopped the reaction. The testosterone should be fully used up, leaving behind estradiol as a suspension and partially dissolved. 
I left it running for so long, because you don't want to end up with a weird mix of testosterone and estradiol, which would be hard to separate. It would be an absolute disaster. For the extraction I began with toluene, which was a mistake. As it turns out, estradiol is poorly soluble in it. Fortunately for us, the other chemicals in solution won't get extracted by toluene either, so after two extractions with toluene, three more were performed with diethyl ether, which is suited for estradiol and the layers were then combined. Estradiol is very soluble in alcohol, but in comparison to the other solvents I just named, alcohol is water soluble and thus unsuited for a two-phase extraction. To extract, you add the solvent to the funnel, shake it aggressively and then drain off the layer you want. Repeat as often as desired. As ether and toluene are lighter than the aqueous phase, I had to drain the bottom layer into a bottle before collecting the good stuff. In the end, we were left with this b****, uh, I meant to say strange looking stuff. The first time the top layer was decanted, a lot of strange white substance came over, so I put it back, cleaned the dish and tried again. This time it miraculously worked. I guess it was a weird toluene, ether, water and enzyme mix. These small spots you can see floating around were sucked up using a pipette. With our trusted fan method, the ether toluene mix evaporated in under an hour. It's definitely not a lot, but I weighed the slightly red substance and it was 16 milligrams. To purify it further, I set up a tiny makeshift column by cutting open a pipette, stuffing the bottom with glass wool and sand and filling up the rest with silicic acid. I then saturated the column with a methanol acetonitrile mixture and sandwiched the product between two layers of clean sand on top. The column is tiny and we are using an enormous amount of solvent. If there's leftover testosterone, it will not separate from the estradiol. My motivation to do it anyways is the following. With this simple step we can get rid of any hydrophobic substance from the toluene ether extraction. And there you have it, a bunch of vials that men shouldn't touch. To find out which vials contain estradiol and where it could be contaminated, we are going to try running a TLC. As a comparison and to test if it would even work, an estradiol solution, a testosterone solution and a mixed one will be prepared. Estradiol and testosterone are both very soluble in ethanol, so that will be our solvent. Close up the vials and aggressively shake them. Putting small spots of solution onto a TLC plate is a challenge if your capillary tubes are thick. A life hack to make it work is to heat them up, stretch them out and break them in the middle. While cutting TLC plates, I always love taking bets. So take your bet. Will it break or not? I should invest into a better glass cutter. I break them more often than not. These blades are very brittle and when they break, they don't only hurt your hands, but also your soul. As it turns out, the problem was not my incompetence, but the glass cutter. With a new one, cutting was a piece of cake. Tiny droplets of the solutions were applied to three pre-marked points. As a solvent for the TLC, a 50-50 mixture of methyl cyanide and methanol was used. Plain chloroform would have been a wiser choice, because as we already know, the hormones are very soluble in alcohol, but more on that later. Solvents travel upwards on the TLC plate, and because of intermolecular force interactions between the molecules with the silica, some travel faster than others. You cannot see the sex hormones under UV light and the plate needs to be developed first. Spraying it with an alcoholic sulfuric acid solution and putting it on a hot plate at 120 degrees celsius for 10 minutes is enough. With the naked eye you can barely see the three spots. With UVC light they were not visible at all, but with our trusted black light lamp they were visible. The testosterone spots glowed brightly, the other ones were at the same heights, but it did not turn out well on video. Due to incorrect solvent choice, the spots traveled up too much. For this reason I will simply discard the first four vials, because they will only contain solvents, combine the other ones, evaporate the solvent and test the final product again, this time with the correct solvent. For fixing the poor visibility of the estradiol spot last time, a more concentrated reference solution was prepared and before the finished product dried completely, we used this solution as well. According to various papers, the sleepy juice chloroform is a good solvent for the TLC. When you look closely, you can see that the solvent front is uneven. The reason may be that the air is not saturated enough with chloroform vapors due to me freezing my ass off in the lab. Develop the plate with alcoholic sulfuric acid and heat and now you see two beautiful spots. Look closely and you can make out the uneven vapor front. Taking this into account, the spots seem to be on the same height, meaning that the biosynthesis worked. You can see that our yield is going to be enormous. Those tiny crystals are all we got. Scrape them together with a highly specialized tool, weigh them out and we are left with 5 milligrams of product. This represents a 2.7% yield, which is tiny. And there you have it, estradiol made via biochemistry and I never thought that this would even be possible. In medicine, you often encounter esters of estradiol because E2 itself has a short half-life in the body. 
To show you how to make one of them, I will make the benzoic acid diester. Add your femboy powder to a flask, pyridine to act as a solvent and base at the same time, and then benzoyl chloride. What I am doing here is an interesting and relatively safe method to prepare esters. If you want, you can pause and take a look at the mechanism. I stirred the mixture for an hour and we should be left with estradiol dibenzoate. To get crystals, you add water, cool it down and filter them out. The crystals ended up being too fine to be filtered off. If you used less pyridine, it may have worked and you could have obtained a free crystalline powder. If you liked today's video, make sure to subscribe to my OnlyFans, uh, I mean Patreon, and I have to say that I had a lot of fun filming this. Because it was something completely different, and I hope that you got a good laugh out of it. If you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you didn't, you don't have to, I don't care. I just hope that you got a good laugh out of it, and I'm wishing all of you a great day. Until next time.